Hey, Frankson, how are you doing today? You guys enjoying the day so far? Yeah. That's good. Well, as Chrissy said, my name is Todd Rogerson, and I've worked for G Adventures now for about seven years. And whether it's Antarctica or northeastern Greenland or even the Amazon uh, in Latin America, I've seen firsthand how tourism can indeed affect local communities. So a couple questions that I have for you today, and you can shout out an answer if you want to, is can tourism be a force of global change, growth, and good? Can a travel company change the world for the better? Yeah. Well, I have about 15 minutes to explain how that can happen. <clears throat> so what I want to talk about today is changing perceptions of travel and how it's more than just all-inclusives and big bus tours, how we can truly give back and travel can be one of the greatest forms of wealth distribution that the world has ever seen. And of course, I would like to use G Adventures as an example. And the reason why? It's because we're not your typical travel company. Our founder, Bruce, who wrote the book that's on your, your seats there, he's not called our CEO, he's called our captain. And our head office in Toronto, Canada is actually called Basecamp. And we don't have tour leaders. We have chief experience officers, or CEOs is what we like to call them. The reason why is because we realize the most important person in our company is the person that leads our adventures with you on them. Now, in order to achieve what I'm talking about today, sustainable growth, uh, making sure that money remains local, all the great things that really transcend travel. Each employee that works for this company, it's, there's 22 offices around the world, they need to believe in the same thing. They need to be a part of that movement. And we've been able to achieve that, luckily, with G Adventures. And just to, I'll show you a quick clip here of, of just how weird we are, but also at the same time, how connected we are globally, whether you're in Bangkok or Buenos Aires. And it'll just lift your spirits a little bit. You don't have to. <laughs> Woo! That was me. Um, back in 1990, this style of travel never existed. Uh, the founder, Bruce, came down from a Tibetan mounted, mount, mounted, mountain and funded the company with two credit cards because he couldn't secure financing from banks. Now, from that first trip back in 1990 to now, we have over 700 itineraries in 100 countries on all seven continents. And I'm here to explain that any travel company can provide sustainable solutions, and this is just kind of how we do it. Now, back in 1990, this was a crazy idea, but it was a good idea, which we believe was a crazy good idea. Now, the style of travel merges the independence of backpacking with the logistical support of a group tour, making sure that the traveler has the, the most cultural experience and that the money actually remains local in the communities. Now, we truly do believe that traveling is an instrumental uh, power of change, um, where the, the style of travel fosters understanding between cultures and really strengthens local communities. Now, making sure that money remains local in our communities has been fundamental since day one. Our very first trip saw Bruce partner with Delphine, who ran his own home out of an Amazon jungle in Ecuador. And it's a partnership that continues to this day. We're able to bring groups to Delphine's community, which actually grew from one, one hut to now a community, and he can explain how important it is to give back to Pachamama, or Mother Earth. And it also provides an income for Delphine to grow his community, seeing his children actually go to university for travel and tourism. Now, this all stems from one very important question, and that's where do your travel dollars go? In a study that was focused towards all-inclusives and big bus tours, we found something shocking out. For every $100 that's spent in developing nations, only $5 actually stays within the developing nation's economy. This is huge. But what if we were to create, uh, what if we were to look at tourism as, a, as creating a movement? And 
beyond local money that stays within the developing nation's economy. I'm going to show you a video here. It's about three minutes, and it talks about how the travel industry is so important to the world and how it affects every single part of it. Um, and also, uh, be wary, the, um, the music's kind of from the mid-90s, so enjoy that. So that, what that video does is that challenges our travelers to think of travel differently and to really think about the places that they're going and hopefully think about supporting those places that they visit instead of just taking photographs. Who's heard of uh, what, take only photographs, leave only footprints? You guys have probably heard that before. We need to do more than that. We need to actually give back to those places that we go to. So that, that video kind of sums up. Um, Planetara, which I'll get to in a second. But in a nutshell, we believe that travel transforms, that it builds peace and understanding. We believe that, it, uh, that um, travel can change lives and make the world a better place. And so I've explained the, the problem. I've explained what we need to do. But now I just want to talk about how we do that, how G Adventures does that. And again, every travel company has the ability to do this. I'm just using G Adventures as an example of how it's done. Planetara. Planetara is a nonprofit organization that was founded in 2003, and it's, it's funded by G Adventures and Traveler Donations alone. It, ex it, it, it actually funds projects and initiatives globally and helps support local economies. However, what it does is, whether it's a, a hurricane that hits northern United States, or it's a typhoon that hits the Philippines, or there's an earthquake in Haiti, Planetara exists to recognize and support the needs globally, whether it's in the G Adventures travel regions or outside of them. Again, trying to transcend travel here, not just thinking about where we go. Now, 
some of the things that we can do uh, in your day-to-day -day operations. So Planetaire is one thing, but how can any travel company make sure that they give back locally? Well, what we do is we use local transport. And not only does this keep costs down for the traveler and interaction up, it actually gives back money locally. You're going to hear, uh, you've already heard it, you're going to hear that more from me today. Also, we use local accommodation that reflects the character of the destinations that we travel. And again, trying to use ones that are run locally as well. However, we don't go in for charitable giving. We look to try to find sustainable solutions, again, using locally owned and operated alternatives whenever and wherever possible. An example of this is the Women's Weaving Co-op in Peru's Sacred Valley, specifically the Cuacacoyo community. Now, what we saw here is the, tradition, the traditional weaving practices of these ladies were in danger of being lost. And the communities were even sending their children to the city streets of Cusco after clubs would go to, to sell chiclets and candy bars. And that was to generate income for these families. So we identified this, this problem. And without pouring money into it, we just created awareness to our travelers. And we started running our tours through these communities and, so that the travelers could buy the textiles from these women. This is back in 2005. Now we can say that the children are, they can afford their children to go to school. And they've even been able to fund training for, their, uh, for, the, for the men of the, the city to be uh, porters on the Inca Trail. Now, this helps G Adventure um, reach its business needs also by identifying solutions that can help these, these local communities and cultures. Now, this is just a sneak peek into how travel can be one of the greatest forms of wealth distribution that this world has ever seen. And what I know, and what many people at G Adventures know, is that the true power lies within you, the traveler. Freedom of choice is an incredible thing. And we need to change the perception of travel so that people understand just how important it is when done the right way. So today I'll leave you with a question. What will you do today for tomorrow? Today is just another day. Perfectly ordinary. It's the sort of day that happens once in a lifetime. And just like any other, it's the sort of day that will offer you chances to make tomorrow better. Today may be just another day, but it's yours. Don't let it slip into the shadow of someday. Use it up. Leave something extraordinary in its place. This is your planet. Get to know it. One gesture. One person, one moment at a time. After all, the better you understand it, the more you'll be able to help it. So don't worry what tomorrow will bring. You can choose to make it better. And that is the greatest freedom one can hope for. What will you do today for tomorrow? I thank you all today for, for listening to me ramble on in my Canadian accent, and uh, hope that uh, you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.